Hi there, and welcome to Let's Overthink This. I am Jesse, and we are going to talk today about the Opte. Opti? No idea how to pronounce this, but basically it is a little inkjet printer for your face to apply makeup strategically only in the areas that have dark spots and, I don't know, dark pigmentation? I don't, I don't know nothing about makeup, but it's a pretty cool product. Um, I was not sent this by anybody. I did not, I uh, wasn't given it. I'm not trying to get anybody to buy it. I really don't care if you buy it or not. My girlfriend bought this, just decided to try it out. I think it's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of videos online you can see of people using it, but very few talking about how it actually works. Normally when they say how it works, they're just talking about how you use it. So uh, let's do a little mini teardown, except I can't actually tear it apart because it's really expensive. Uh, but we're going to see what we can learn just by looking at it. So it comes in this uh, box, nicely made, emboss or deboss on the top. Um, it has a couple consumables that come with it. Um, and I'll show you in the actual device what those consumables look like. But um, they're refillable because they're consumables. And it even, in the original, comes with the refill kit. And you essentially get a uh, conditioning cartridge, which I'll talk about in a second, and a spot optimizing serum that is supposed to match your skin tone, roughly. So this one says fair, so it's for fair skin. But I'm told they make this uh, for, again, a bunch of different skin tones. What the device actually looks like is this, this little wand. Um, it comes in this box uh, that's a charging station. It has this conditioning disc, which, spoiler alert, I think is actually a print head cleaner. You can hear from the clicking and grinding uh, that it's actually just kind of wiping the stuff away, but we'll get to that. Essentially, this is the device, and you're supposed to click this into uh, this little top part here. And then you can see there's some LEDs that shine. Uh, the device is telling me that it has 75% left of the, I mean, it even has like a little ink symbol. Uh, in reality, it's makeup um, and some sort of serum, I guess. The funny thing is you often see people, like the, in, the uh, influencers or whatever they're called, trying this out. And uh, frankly, a lot of them are very young and have great skin anyway. And so it's a little bit of a joke because you're trying to show how it effectively evens out your skin on people who already have very even skin. But there is one video where it shows it on that person's mother who has age spots and a bunch of uh, different coloration on her face, and it actually works really, really well. Um, the two main claims are essentially that the makeup covers up those spots, and the second claim is that the serum that it deposits uh, actually lessens those spots over time. I can't tell you whether that part is a scam or not because I haven't tried this for months and seen whether those spots go away or not, but the makeup part does seem to work. So let's see if we can find a way to show you that it's actually doing something. I'll be right back. I put on some bright lights here and switched the camera just to me close up so I can try to show you what this does super quickly. Um, again, lots of videos you can find of people actually using this. But uh, just as an example, there's like a, an old, like an age spot somewhere here. So I'll just, over that, you can hear it clicking. And I can't even really see whether it's there or not. But it makes stuff like that go away pretty well. I don't really care, but I'm just, again, demoing it. You can see there's a, some sort of a coloration there, dark spot. I don't know. I think that's gone. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, the clicking is uh, not actually uh, a sound it needs to make. I'm pretty sure this thing is dead silent. It's a little speaker in there that does a little uh, clicking sound like a, like a Geiger counter, or uh, if you remember those vacuums that used to give you some visual feedback or auditory feedback that you were picking up some dirt. And I think it just makes that click because otherwise you'd be like, is it doing anything? So it just makes that click to, uh, to give you some feedback. But uh, yeah, that's what it does. Okay, so let, let's talk about what this is. How does it work? Um, you have this charging station and you have this wand and inside this wand there's a cartridge right here and this is the, I guess, serum cartridge or whatever they're calling it. It's basically an inkjet cartridge as far as I can tell, or at the very least let's say it's microfluidics and I'll show you a little bit later how fine 
the makeup mist it puts out is. But it has a bunch of contact pads. I think that's so it can essentially tell it which of the heads. You can see there's a, a grid, like an array, uh, so it can activate uh, whichever jet it needs to to align with wherever it sees a dark spot. My guess is uh, it's also keeping track of how much fluid it's deposited because when you stick this in there, there's a percentage and the percentage tells you how much uh, makeup is left in here. And I think the only way it could know that is if it's keeping track because you can swap different cartridges in for different skin tones. So my guess is it's uh, essentially just subtracting from a counter every time it deposits some, uh, some makeup. Um, I, I don't know if it's doing other things. It might tell this unit that it's a fair cartridge and change the LED or, or something like that, depending on um, what kind of skin tone it needs to detect, but I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Um, so let's stick this back in there. Okay. Uh, it actually wants to go back home now. It's a little bit smart. It needs to be cleaned and it'll tell you that stuff. Let's not put it back home yet because I want to show you something else. Now, you normally stick it in here and it has this thing, which it says is a conditioning disc. I think that's what they call it. Conditioning disc, um, which is a, a euphemism. I think they're trying to get away from you thinking that this is essentially an ink printer, um, but it's basically a head cleaner. This is the conditioning disc that you snap in. And if you take it out, uh, first off, you can't tell, but it weighs almost nothing. It's just uh, an outer shell of plastic. And then if you look in it, once it's been used, you can pretty clearly see First of all, there's makeup on it, so it's clear that it's been um, in contact with makeup. And it has these little rubber wipers and a foam pad, so it's pretty clear what it's doing. Now, it won't let me actually rotate this, but there's a cog on the bottom, um, which seems like it's rotated by this thing here. There's also two little pins here. Um, one goes in here, and I don't really see that it's touching anything, but the other one looks like it pushes down that paddle. Uh, so my guess is if we push down this little paddle, yeah, it'll let us rotate this. And we can see basically that it's just absorbing any kind of stray makeup that ends up on the end of there. And this wiper, let's see what that aligns with. Yeah, my guess is that this foam pad absorbs any excess makeup from the um, actual head, like the print head. And then this rubber wiper is probably wiping anything that gets onto the optical sensor and the LEDs, which I'll talk about in a second. But basically it's like a windshield wiper and the little foam sponge to clear off that other part. So let's just reset this back. Hope that's about right. Shove that back in again. Okay. And they want you to replace this every time because I, I guess as you use up the ink, uh, basically, you're also using up the uh, printhead cleaner and the foam gets saturated with makeup and it needs a new one. So you need a clean um, uh, conditioning disc and then a clean uh, ink cartridge there, essentially. Now, this part that goes on the top, it, it actually won't operate without this head on it. And if you look, there's actually nothing in the head. Uh, it has these two little rollers that are slightly spiky. Um, at first, I thought this was the way I could tell how it was moving, how fast it was moving across your skin. But if you look, there's nothing attached to it. They're just freely spinning. Um, so I have two guesses about what those are for. One is you're supposed to lightly touch your skin. You're supposed to softly do it. You're not supposed to jam it in. So my guess is they did this to give you some tactile feedback so you could tell when it's just lightly touching your skin because they're a little spiky and you would be able to tell if you're jamming it in. The second guess is that as it's depositing makeup, it may want you to help kind of, not spread it, but help like dissolve it a little bit on the edges so it fades out. So it might be that they chose this little spiky material because it essentially catches a little bit of makeup as it's rolling and kind of deposits it so that it has like a fade. You don't just have a line where it printed. So those are my guesses, but it doesn't really do anything other than that. Um, and then you can see inside there's a black mask, which I'm guessing is a visual mask for the optical sensor so that you don't get reflections from these LEDs um, into there. So my guess is that's literally just a, to help it visually see your skin through that little slot. Uh, you can see in the meantime, now it's complaining that it wants to go home. It gets complainy. Ah, let's put that over there. Um, you can also see that it's not a great at aiming. In theory, you'd want all the makeup to be shot into that little uh, slot down there, but clearly some of it's ended up, I mean, with my finger, I can kind of scrape it off that edge there. Um, clearly the print heads or whatever you want to call them are, are not 
very precise. They have a, a spray pattern, and so this also collects any residual um, spray. And the way, what you're meant to do is this is meant to be on here like this, and then you're meant to put this in here, or not. Clearly, I don't know how to use this thing. Let's just put it down there like that. And then you're meant to jam this into there. And it says, hello, and uh, it's gonna ask me to close this, close lid. It likes this thing to be closed, and it's probably gonna make some noise. That's my guess, maybe not. There you go. It likes to make noise. That noise is that kind of crude wiper going back and forth across the print head um, and absorbing any excess makeup. Okay, now let's run a little experiment. We're gonna open this up. And every time you open it, it counts. I think it cleans the head again. My guess is it wastes a little bit of makeup every time you turn this on, just to make sure the heads are, are primed and uh, don't have dry makeup setting on, they're clogging them. If you ever owned an old inkjet printer, you know what I'm talking about. Um, my guess is that's why there's so much makeup in here is it's cleaning the head. Okay, it said ready, we're gonna pull this out. Now, as I mentioned last time, it likes to have this head on there. That's what turns on these LEDs. If you take this head off, uh, it'll turn off those LEDs and it won't activate it all. Um, but how does it know that it's on there? Um, you'll notice that basically the only thing here are these two magnets. My guess is, yep, my guess is that that magnet going over here activates a, um, a Hall effect sensor or some sort of magnetic switch that tells it that, there, that this is on. So let's try to trick it. I have this little uh, I have this little magnet for holding paper to things. So um, no switch on that side, but sure enough, if I put the magnet on that side, it does activate those LEDs. Uh, people online have been asking, are those UV LEDs? I, I seriously doubt it. I think there'd be no reason to, to do that. Um, it might be a very specific uh, spectrum of LED, a narrow spectrum so that it can identify dark spots on your skin and be less triggered by hair or what have you, but it, it does actually get triggered by hair. Um, but nonetheless, now that means it's, it's active. And so uh, if I bring this over something, you can, hear, you can hear it activating. Now, what I think is happening, there are these two um, blue LEDs and what looks like an optical sensor in the middle. I think this operates like one of those old school optical mouse, optical mice that, that people used to have, where it essentially shines a light down. And I think it just essentially reads surface imperfections going by and from that, it can read whether you have a, uh, a color spot and it can probably also read how fast you're moving, although you're supposed to move pretty slow with this device. I think if you don't, it essentially misses. The dark spot goes by and then by the time the makeup gets to the skin uh, through that distance from there to there, it's missed it. Um, and yeah, again, basically we can trigger this if we uh, get this the right distance. You heard that click, there you go, like that. So it's essentially just looking for dark spots and it's shooting um, ink out of here or, or makeup rather. Now I tried to see the makeup. It's, it's actually really hard to see. Um, at first I wondered why um, I shone a really bright light on it and I couldn't quite see it. But the real trick here, here is that it's spraying a very, very, very fine mist. I mean, um, it's really microfluidics. It's tiny amount of fluid. Um, I suspect it's like picoliters, which is the unit they use for, um, for ink jets. It's like a tiny, it's a trillionth of a liter, it's a, a picoliter. Um, and it's, it's that very, very fine mist. And so the way I was able to record this before was I got a laser pointer and shown it across there. And, uh, and I'll see if I can insert that clip here. With a laser pointer, you can see the fine jet of makeup being shot out of this onto the surface. And I think the fine mist is, is great because you, you want it to be really subtle. You don't want it to drip or, or really, you know, do anything other than just kind of um, have, have almost like an airbrush effect. And so that's definitely what it does. As a side note, you can see there are some gold plated contacts here and some gold plated contacts here. Undoubtedly, that is for charging. Um, I assume there's some sort of lithium battery in here. Um, and probably some other thing I'm not aware of. Um, it probably sends wake up and sleep commands and other things like that when you stick this in. 
um, because when you shove this in, you'll notice that the display changes. It knows it's in the box and says to close the lid. There's a few mysteries. Uh, this thing says to always leave it plugged in. It says that in every, like the manual, the back of the box, it says that everywhere. So I'm not sure what faults uh, they notice when you don't leave this plugged in. I don't know whether it's the head gets clogged more often or it loses track of how many uh, sessions it has left. I'm not really sure. There's a technology that's kind of like this. Uh, there's a printer um, that you can use to print temporary tattoos and it's essentially the same thing uh, but designed for a temporary ink as opposed to makeup but it essentially allows you to upload a graphic or use a bunch of the the fonts or graphics that are in the device run it across your skin and it basically prints a temporary tattoo right onto your skin in real time and it's similar in the way that it does that is it's using an optical scanner to watch how fast the skin goes by and adjust how fast it's printing because obviously other, otherwise it would be kind of stretching and then compressing that graphic depending on how fast you moved. I think this is quite a similar uh, thing. In some ways it's, it's less complicated because I don't think it cares that much how fast you're moving. It only has one row and it doesn't have to have that graphic um, be legible. On the other hand, I think this is more complicated in that the makeup is likely a lot more viscous. There's probably pigments in it that are a solid in some sort of suspension, um, which is probably really tricky to, to handle from a fluidic standpoint to make sure it doesn't clog the head. So um, yeah, there's a precedent for how this device is, is made, uh, but I have never seen anything like this for makeup. Thank you for watching. Let's overthink this. This has been the uh, teardown, non-teardown of the Opte, Opti makeup applicator device.